All right, time for another DraftPhysics.com. DebatePhysics.com also, but as stated, the debate is always ruined by the cabal of morons who wish to control what people talk about and how people think and what people say, and it's just really, really bad. So, uh, in a foundation kind of way, in a non-profit way, I guess I will have to become the opposing you know, Mr. Clean, and uh, have to clean, <laughs> okay, another another shitty resource, another place where they lie and deceive and are just as creepy as they can possibly be. Um, all the, you know, there's just so many places where there's just bad human beings, and somebody has got to get in the trench and, uh, you know, shovel the sewage. So anyway, um, I'm thinking eventually we'll turn this into a real thing like I will actually solicit donations and I'll actually pay people okay to you know do this thing <laughs> yeah you know uh, write funny commercials um, uh, you don't even have to perform them just good scripts would be nice um, you know little funny icons like this that just point out what a shithole Wikipedia is what a menace to civilization um, morons are and when morons are editing that uh, nothing good is going to happen that the people editing have to be better okay than the lowest uh, scurviest slug life uh, they have to be smart human beings and um, human beings who care about the truth and uh, that's not what Wikipedia is okay it's a shithole Every single editor so far has done nothing but demonstrate their petty, small-dicked, small-bald, creepy human beings. So anyway, if you have some creative energy that you have nothing to do with and you, you know, can't find a cause, uh, right now it's just, okay, yeah, it'd be nice if you could do, put a little energy into um, shooting, <laughs> you know, with punnery. Let's punnerize Wikipedia um, as they deserve. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, so if you come up with little catchphrases and little things just to mock the ridiculous wad of shit that Wikipedia is, uh, then please um, do what you can. I'm certainly working on it. <laughs> you know, uh, I'll devote some of my energy to the cause. I mean, again, I like to stick to the physics and I will be doing that. Uh, and we'll just go over all the bad physics that Wikipedia says we must believe. And if we don't believe it, we will be, we won't even be allowed to talk about it in the deepest, darkest caves on earth. The places most hidden from the public. We still can't have the conversation. <laughs> you can't challenge their authority. Uh, I guess we could take a, yeah, we should, I should probably find a, a uh, little South Park clip or something to throw in here uh, because they are so bad. All right. <clears throat> so. Hey, yeah, the, the camera angle sucks. I figured it would. All right, get back. A little better. Uh, so this is what I sent as my appeal. Okay. I never attempted to edit. Okay, it's just the truth. I merely solicited voluntary discussion regarding the scientific credibility of the physics you claim to be worthy of inclusion in your cyclopedia. That's all I did. It's a fact, absolutely provable, in court. I made well-reasoned arguments, and the simple truth is I made the mistake of winning those arguments. Another fact. Okay. I have been blocked from talking on the subject pages for no good reason. Well, I mean, obviously the reason is, is that I'm smarter than them and they don't like it. And I would make the page better, more accurate, and they don't like that. And I have been blocked from defending myself on my own talk page for no good reason. Obviously, I didn't do anything from the point they blocked me to the point I talked on my talk page. I obviously didn't say anything or do anything that could cause any damage to the encyclopedia or whatever, violate some sort of rule. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't. 
All right, you will find no quote of mine violating any rational standard of etiquette. Okay. Rational in terms of fair. I didn't, you know, if somebody called me a turd, I responded with, well, you're, you know, not a great thing either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so this is the decline statement. I'm declining your unblock request because it does not address the reason for your block. I mean, <laughs> what do you mean? How, how didn't it? The reason for my block is I'm right and your editors are wrong and that's why I'm blocked. Okay. Or because it is inadequate for other reasons. Oh, for whatever. I don't have to explain anything. I don't have to acknowledge what you said. I don't have to quote it. I don't have to do anything. I can just type this shit at you. Okay. Uh, to be unblocked, you must convince the reviewing administrators that either the block is not necessary to prevent damage. So, of course, there was never any threat of damage. It was always made clear, I am not going to edit anything. All right. So, so again, you have no evidence that I had some master plan to actually edit something because I didn't. Okay, or disrupt, or disruption to Wikipedia, and disruption is you're not allowed to win an argument. Okay, we got that part. Oh, this is so pathetic. You're just like, how could anything be run this way? This is the number one reference on Google. This sack of shit nonsense. This is what they think is a credible source or that the block is no longer necessary because you understand what you have been blocked for. Yeah, I do understand it. You have a micro penis and you're just a petty lunatic because of it. It's not my fault, okay? Blame, go, go, go piss this shit at your parents. Uh, <clears throat> for will not continue to cause damage or disruption. So again, I didn't cause any damage or disruption. Nobody was required to argue the argument at all. No one was required to give a shit. No one. It was absolutely as benign as you could possibly get. All right. And we'll make useful contributions instead. Well, I think it's useful to defend the truth. So again, I'll contend in court that all I did was defend the truth. And all these scumbags did was do everything they could to stop me from doing that. Uh, all right, so just so fucking stupid. Okay, your appeal is now closed. You will need to take time to consider the reply from the administrator because he's better than you. Should you wish to file a new appeal, well, fuck you. <laughs> you will need to wait a few days uh, to do so to ensure that you have thought about the administrator's reply. I mean, can you imagine people this fucking full of themselves? They really think they're better than us. Oh, God, what pukes. You can still view it by going to the following link and entering your uh, appeal key. No, you can't. I went to that link. I'm IP blocked. Okay, I can't view the link. You get a error message that says, well, let us know what's wrong. How exactly do I do that, fuckhead? So even their software is dumb. Okay, so <clears throat> this apparently, so this is the new guy we can make fun of, JJMC89. You know, it's two small J's, a big M, a big C, and an 89. So he was born in 89. I, that's another thing that's just kind of... <laughs> people put their year. Oh, God. Anyway. Um, so, you know, funny. Anyway, so I haven't looked him up yet. Oh, but it's just... It's so pathetic. Oh, fuck. All right. So, um, yeah, I'll see where I go from here. Uh, I'll pause and decide what to do with the rest of this video. Oh, there we are. All right, so I, let's do a little bit of the double slit experiment <laughs> since that was uh, the subject of the previous video. So we'll just do a little more ragging about how freaking ignorant, okay, the science is and how it's all just mush. I mean, this is so unscientific a statement they're making here. So in modern physics, the double slit experiment demonstrates that light and matter 
So again, they, they say they're doing the same experiment with matter. It's not the same experiment. There's no slits. They're hitting crystals. They're doing all kinds of other bullshit. It's just a lie. Okay, can satisfy the seemingly incongruous classical definitions. So why do they keep using this word classical? What the fuck does that even mean? It doesn't mean a damn thing. They could say previous peoples. Historically, people didn't believe this, okay? Or something like that. But even those are lies, okay? These are things that have been hotly debated for hundreds of years. And they haven't been debating about, well, let's come up with some mushy uh, uh, compromise and we'll call it uh, black and white, you know, because we can't invent the word gray, <laughs> you know. And there is no gray here, okay? It either is one thing or it is the other thing. And that's just so fucking obvious. So this is all just, this is just such goopy talk here. Um, classical definitions for both waves and particles. Like there is such a thing. There's just no, there's no way you can say something is both. It's just too silly. Okay. The ambiguity, which it doesn't really exist if you just look at the patterns and analyze them with a little bit of uh, open-mindedness. It's not that hard to figure out, hey, you know what? This has a distinctive things are happening, right? Look at the image and you say, well, first off, how come the blobs are all crookedy? Okay, and then there's this line at the bottom and a little line over here and at the top and that they don't match. There's no symmetry there. And here you have these dead spots, okay? I mean, one of them's a really hard dead spot, and the other one's a little bit ambiguous, but, you know. Uh, and then you have another startup of the pattern. And, oh, well, this one looks like it's twice as big as these other little ones over here. There's really distinct features, and they don't pay any attention. I mean, zero. This couldn't care less that it's, ah, telling you something. There's information in that image. And they don't care about any of that information. And then they type this crap. This is the best they think science can do. All right. <clears throat> this ambiguity is considered evidence. So again, considered by who? So again, more just vague references to the authorities say so. The authority says so. But they won't name the authority. So they can't say something like, well, Newton didn't think so. And... Uh, you know, Einstein didn't think so, uh, but the rest of us did, some kind of crap like that. But they can't even be honest about what this ambiguity, okay, that they think existed, that somehow everybody else thought it was ambiguous, when no, there were people on clear sides. It was people who clearly thought it's corpuscular in nature, and then people who thought, oh, it's this wavy stuff is flying and it goes over there and then it decides to go over here instead and blah, blah 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 these fantasy fairy tales all right considered evidence for the fundamentally probabilistic so again this is now they're telling us we have to believe what Feynman says it's not fundamentally probabilistic okay what it is is synthetically random <laughs> yeah that's what it is all right, nature of quantum mechanics. So, yes, they have to throw quantum mechanics, whatever the fuck that is, into this conversation. So we have to believe that particles have entangled ESP powers, okay? But they're not particles. They're wavicles. I mean, it's just mush. They can't just sit there and simply say there is a phenomenon that when you pass photons through materials that have surfaces that the photons create a fringe pattern. No, they can't just tell you the facts. They have to throw all of this crappy mysticism on top of it. This type of experiment was first performed by Thomas Young. So a big fat fucking lie, frankly. I mean, Newton did the experiment in the sense that he did this, okay, the opening, and then he did this, the non-opening. And if you really think about it, well, what is the double slit? Well, it's the impediment stuck in between the slit, right? Duh. So this goes all the way back to Newton. Newton did the real hard treading on all of these subjects. I mean, his optics book is, again, just so deep. Okay. Um, Thomas Young's contribution was garbage. He compared it to a water wave. The water waves don't do anything with a single slit. 
and the double slit pattern created by a water wave doesn't have that big giant central maxima okay this thing here water waves don't do this they don't make this big giant blob here all right so not even close to the same thing it isn't just like this is just little kids would sit there and say this shit this isn't a thoughtful scientific examination. It's fucking reckless, sloppy nonsense. Okay, as a demonstration of the wave behavior of visible light. So again, there really wasn't any good comparison. Water in the single slit makes no pattern. Okay, so nothing like it. In the double slit, water doesn't get the right answer. There, this double slit in light creates this complex pattern. Water doesn't create any complex pattern. And this single node in the middle is the same size as the little ones on the side. I mean, these are fundamental, gigantic differences in the pattern. It's not the same pattern. And it's the simplest pattern in the universe. On, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. I mean, you know, you really do have to pay a little attention to the details. And they paid no attention to any detail. They just wanted to turn it all into some sort of mushy, wooey, wavy bullshit. So this is just a religion. They're just reciting to us how they developed their catechism. So they might as well have a Wikipedia page that explains to you how, you know, the Holy Mother of Christ, blah, 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 uh, you know, and why there's uh, Mary is on the toast is because Mary's lonely, and every now and then she wants to say, Hi, everybody, it's me. I mean, just write religion, just write little fably stories, okay, and accept no accountability for how they don't have anything to do with the fucking truth. All right, um, Thomas Young in 1801, as a demonstration of wave behavior of visible light. Let's just understand there's no, no similarity really between water and what photons are doing. The patterns have fundamental features that are distinctly different. Okay. In 1927, Davison and Gramer, so I haven't even heard of these people, and independently, George Peggett Thompson, so this is... 126 years later, <laughs> right? So we went from 1801 to 1927. So we just jumped over a hundred years. Okay, and his research student, Alexander Ridd, uh, demonstrated that electrons show the same behavior. So he's saying it's the same behavior. There was no slits. Okay, obviously you can't randomly shoot electrons. So again, more bullshit. So just it, this this is such a, a it's not even you can't even call it whitewash this is poo wash okay this is a poo wash they've done to science this is not what took place all right just absolute provably nonsense it's not the same experiment all right demonstrated electrons show the same behavior which was later extended to atoms and molecules. And again, they don't show it, okay? If you actually look at the data, it's absolutely ridiculous. The amount of pattern is so tiny. Uh, it, it's, you know, it's nonsense. All right, anyway. So why would they jump from 1801, go to 1927, now jump back to Thomas Young again? Why would they do that? Oh, Thomas, this is, yeah, no, it's Thomas Young. I have to click this so I can see it. Oh, you should be able to see it too, and it's not on the screen for some dumb reason. Uh, well, you didn't need to see writing, but yeah, you did need to see me pointing to the pattern. Uh, where the hell is it? Sorry. I don't know what happened. I don't know how it got. Well, anyway, so here's the pattern as I was talking about. Look at these distinctive features. So first, they got this slanty stuff. They should be able to figure out why it's being slanted. And uh, then obviously the pattern goes up and down because you got a little bit of these bars at the bottom, but it's not symmetrical. These The top bars are further away than the bottom bars. These are all details that are really important and they pay no attention. Then you got these dead spots that aren't entirely dead, right? I mean, there's a little ghost particle that's actually there. Uh, but you can count these nodes and you can find that this center one always has an odd number and that these nodes, it's always almost two of those would equal the middle, one less. So if you put two of those together, you count how many blobs there are, 
the middle is going to have one less. It's always going to be an odd number. All right. So there's real features in here, and they don't pay any attention. Couldn't care less. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so Thomas Young's experiment with light was part of classical physics. So again, why do they keep using this term? Let's see what it says. Classical physics is a group of physics theories, so it's any old theory, uh, <laughs> that predate modern. So anything that predates modern, they're going to call classical. So frankly, Einstein's now pretty old stuff, so we're going to call that classical now. Uh, more complete or more widely appreciated, uh, no, applicable theories. So it predates the more complete. So they're saying their current theory is more complete when they haven't even figured out water waves don't make a pattern with a single slit. Or mildly, you know, it's just, it's just so amazingly dishonest. Or more widely uh, appreci uh, no, applicable. Why would they say that theories? So, so they're saying their modern theory is more truthworthy when, no, in fact, it isn't. It doesn't have anything. It's all wooey, made-up speculation. You draw a silly diagram of a photon. I mean, again, I, you, you really think Newton wouldn't say what the fuck you're talking about when he looked at that drawing of your fi silly photon? If a currently accepted theory is considered to be modern and its introduction represents a major paradigm shift, than the previous something or other. So how dare they do this, this, this generic term classical physics when it doesn't mean a damn thing. They're gonna call both Newton and Leibniz classical physics when the two theories are completely diametrically opposed. Long before the development of quantum mechanics and the concept of wave-particle duality, so again, the concept of uh, preposterous compromise. And again, all the people from, let's say, the 19, from 1900, from, let's say from 16, 1690, okay, to 1900, uh, there was no duality, okay? You either thought it was a corpuscle or you thought it was some sort of ether perturbation bullshit. Uh, he believed it demonstrated that Kristen Huygens' wave theory of light was correct. Um, yeah, he was a wave guy, right? So that's it. He was a wave. He just happened to be a wave guy, okay? And somehow the wave cult um, got more funding, <laughs> you know. And so we have Catholics instead of um, whatever, silly Tillytons. You know, the silly Tillytons couldn't collect enough money for their religion. They say that Jesus actually stood on his head in water. He didn't just walk on the water. He stood on his head in the water. Yeah, that's their theory. All right, uh, was correct. And his experiment is sometimes referred to as Young's experiment. So I've never heard it called Young's experiment. It's always called Young's double slit experiment, but whatever. Or Young's slits. So where did they get this from? Okay is sometimes referred to as Young's experiment or Young's slits. Now, where did they get that piece of information from? Because the fact is, if we go right on YouTube right now, I will contend that the odds that you're going to hear it called Young's slits is one in a hundred, you know, compared to how often it'll be Young's double slit experiment. So why do they say it? Oh, because it's rubbish. And they have a footnote to it because some asshole said it in some book. So therefore, we all have to think of it in those terms. But they didn't do any real research. They didn't, they didn't survey physicists and say, what do you call it, Mr. Physicist? Feynman didn't call it this. All right. All right, we'll read one more paragraph. I mean, I'm really not doing this, you know, I'll do the, the more hard, serious once we get into the, you know, real shit and start drawing and all that crap. But this is just a, you know, just to show it's all bad science. It's all rubbish. It's all weak. It's not going to talk about anything real. It's going to claim that some sort of experiment they did with an electron is the same fucking experiment when it's completely physically different. I mean, it's inside an electron microscope, for fuck's sake. The experiment belongs to a general class of double path experiments. All right, well, that might be 
somewhat close to accurate. But again, it's we're, we're they're confining us to think that again that the photons are actually the slits is what matters. When if they did any thinking at all, they'd figure out the surfaces is the key element. And all that's happening in these experiments is you're sending photons in, and the photons that go near the surfaces where there's a bunch of electrons are disturbed, and they essentially become a new point source. And those photons come off at angles. And the angles is what's creating the fringe pattern. Obviously, they, you have to explain why is some of the photons going that way. And you can see it right in this image, the obvious fact that, look, this is really, really bright. So most of the photons aren't being bent. Most of the photons aren't being sent to these fringe locations. Uh, and obviously, so it's just the photons that go by the surface. And the ones that go by the surface essentially create a point source, a source of new radiation. And it's those sources that you're just measuring the path length difference from. These are surface experiments. It should be called the two surface experiment for the double, the, the single slit. And the single impediment should be called the two surface experiment. And that's why they get the same answer. The, these two experiments have the same mathematical pattern. Two surfaces. It's the distance between this surface and this surface that decides what the fringes look like. It's the distance between the surfaces that decide. It's not hard to dissect. And they're just so damn stupid. Okay, the experiment belongs, okay, a path experiments in which wave, in which a wave is split into two separate waves. So again, this isn't have anything to do with reality. There's no wave going through a slit and creating a bulge. None of that happens. It's completely not like that. All right, the wave is typically made of many photons with better referred to as wave front. So again, who, who says so? By what logic, what, by what evidence? So why don't you just present the evidence and say, well, this is the evidence and this crazy guy says this. And then you could have what some other crazy guy says it is. Why don't you just be honest and tell people what the evidence is instead of telling us what they think it is? <laughs> you know, not to be confused with wave properties of the individual photons. So this doesn't even make any sense. The group of photons has properties that the wave, the individual photons don't have. Well, you're never going to prove that crap. That later combine into a single wave, whatever that. So this is Huygens theory, uh, you know, nonsense, absolute made up shit. No evidence of it. It's just a made up He's, he's, you know, you have a bunch of dots and he's decided to make it look like uh, whatever, um, Mr. Hankey. Um, you know, and somebody else could connect the dots and come up with a completely different image. All right, changes in the path length of both wave results in a phase shift. Okay, now the phase shift is important, but again, we know the phase shift doesn't have anything to do with the photon itself. It just has to do with the distance it's going to have to travel. So the photon's going to travel a distance, and the distance is going to create the phase shift. So the photon isn't phase shift. So that's just more lies and nonsense. Creating an interference pattern. So there is nothing interfering. So again, it's just a big, fat fucking lie. So we'll do that interference pattern page because that's obviously crap, okay. Another version is the mock Zinglinger interferometer, which splits the beam with a beam splitter. And we know that that's also a pile of crap. They don't even understand what a beam splitter is, because guess what, a plain piece of glass will split light. And they haven't even figured that out. All right, so we'll call that a video. Uh, they're fish to fry and such. Uh, you know, so what did we learn today, okay. Uh, light is not a wave, and uh, Wikipedia uh, is a shithole. <laughs> yeah, full of just, just a bunch of shit talking by authorities. Yes, double authorities, triple authorities. Yes, fascist, elitist motherfuckers who think they are superior. Yes, the superior opinion. Yeah, they're going to give us the superior superior opinion. Yeah, well. 
fuck it till dead and such and so forth and whatnot so till the next installment of you asked for it fuckers <laughs> i mean you just begged me to get pissed off you just begged me to do it you just begged me to do it so this is what you're going to get day after day after day um, so shape up or get this day after day after day uh, prove you have a little shred of integrity just prove it just show it show the shred of integrity somewhere just show that you have a shred of integrity somewhere in your scurvy pus covered pustule covered buttholes anyway it's the best they can do i mean you know they do have wikipedia <laughs> Ugh, yeah, it is a bad thing you don't want it wikipedia i had a friend who had that wikipedia it was bad <laughs> <laughs>